Good morning, New Pilgrim Rest. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. All right, that would have been all right for me, but I'm talking about the Lord of the universe. I'm talking about he who once was dead and is alive forevermore. I'm talking about the creator. He created everything with only a word. Amen. That's who I'm talking about. Let's give a hand, hand clap of praise to. Amen. Amen. Good morning to you who are here, and good morning to our Facebook Live group. Amen. It is time to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to ask the music ministry to come with one selection, and I'll be right back with a word of prayer. Amen. Can we just give God another hand clap of praise on this morning? Is anybody glad to be in God's house? Amen. The Bible says that the blessings of the Lord make it rich and added no sorrow. Does anybody believe that on this morning? Yep. Hallelujah. Yep. Yeah. We love you, Jesus. We're blessed in the city. Come on. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Help me say we're blessed, blessed in, in the, the city. city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed. we're blessed when we come and when we go. We strong on sickness and poverty must cease for the devil is defeated we are blessed 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 oh we're blessed we're city we're blessed in the field we're blessed when we come and when we go we cast down every stronghold sickness and poverty must cease for the devil is defeated we are blessed late in the midnight hour god's gonna turn it around it's gonna work in your favor oh Say, late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work. It's gonna work in your favor. Oh, say, late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around and 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 around. city we're blessed in the field we're blessed when we come and when we go we cast down every stronghold sickness and poverty must cease for the devil is defeated we are blessed hallelujah we're blessed in the city yeah, yeah. late in the midnight uh -huh. God's going to turn it around. What's he going to do? It's going to work in your face. I wish you would get that in your spirit. Oh, Come on, say it. Late, Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. It's going to work in your favor. Oh, say it. Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. And around. And around. And poverty must cease, for the devil is defeated. We are blessed. And now, if you believe that you're blessed, just give God a hand clap. I'm praise. blessed. 
I, Do I have any blessed people in the house on this morning? Let's go. I'm Hallelujah. Blessed. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. 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 I am too. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. God, our Father, thank you once again for blessing us, Father. Father, you've blessed us in every area of our lives, Father. We just want to pause to say thank you, Father. Thank you for blessing us in the city, Father. Thank you for blessing in our homes, Father. Thank you for blessing us on our jobs, Father. And we especially thank you for blessing us with your son, Jesus Christ, Father. Thank you for his blood, Father, that was shed on Calvary's cross, Father. Father, thank you for the right that we have to go to heaven, Father, just because he sacrificed his life, Father. Father, we are so blessed because of you, Father. Father, forgive us of our many sins, Father. Cleanse our hearts from all unrighteousness, Father, so we can look more like your son, Father. Father, thank you for our pastor, Father. Thank you for blessing us with this man of God, Father. Thank you for 25 years, Father. Thank you for his preaching and teaching, Father. Thank you for his love, Father. Thank you for his labor, Father. Father, as we prepare to enter into this next worship service, Father, this next phase of worship, Father, we ask that you bless the message that you're going to um, use him to preach on today, Father. We ask that you use him as a vessel, Father. Pour him out, Father. Father, we ask that the words that come from his mouth, Father, bless us on today, Father. We ask that someone come um, asking, what must I do to be saved, Father? We ask that chains are broken, Father. We ask that hearts are healed, Father. We ask this in your darling son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And welcome to this Sunday's edition of Pilgrim Land News. Dr. Bell is inviting all of the men of the New Pilgrim Rest Church out on Monday nights at 6.30 p.m. for the Momentum Men Ministry. So all men are invited to come out on Mondays to share in fun and fellowship in the Lord. All ladies are invited to please come out and share in the Ladies Bible Study on Tuesdays at 11 a.m. either here on campus or on Zoom. So please make sure you're coming out to learn a rich, royal, and regal world in the Lord on Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Hope to see all you ladies there. Pastor is asking all to please join us here at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays for Life Night Bible Study. You can either meet here on campus or you can meet on Zoom. We're learning great lessons such as who is your spiritual mother and are you spiritually mature? So please make sure you join us on Wednesdays at 7 p.m., either here at the church or on Zoom for Wednesday night, Life Night. We're asking all to please me in prayer for our pastor, Dr. Billy L. Bell, as he travels this week to Los Angeles, California for the WHW Expository Preaching Conference. The 2022 b and &B National Institute is here. Yes, we are at that time of year. We will be hosting the b, &B Institute on Wednesday, November the 16th through Friday, November the 18th here at the New Pilgrim Ranch Church. We will have our morning lecturer, the pastor Anthony Pettis, all the way from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Our co-pastor, Dr. Rory E. Bracken, will bring the new message and our nightly evangelist will be none other than the Dr. Frank E. Ray, all the way from Memphis, Tennessee. Classes will begin at 6.30 p.m. We will have classes such as how to handle stress, how to pray, and for our Christian ladies, Christian unity. We will also be incorporating a new class, Nutritional Nuggets for Your Body. Registration for the Churchwide Institute is $75, and you can go to our website to register at www.nprnbcdallas.org for more information. Thank you for watching this Sunday's edition of Pilgrim Land News. We hope you have been greatly impacted by them. We hope to see you guys next week.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise in this place. I don't know about you, but I want to feel God closer than ever before. In the book of James, he tells us to draw near to him, and he'll draw near to us. Amen. This song says, I give myself away. Oh, I, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, I, I give myself away. So you can use me. Come on, sing. I give myself away. Come on, let's make that declaration this morning. I give myself, give myself away. So you, so you can use me. Can use I give myself, give myself away. I give myself, give myself away so you, so you can use me. Can use me. Take my heart, yeah. take my life as a living sacrifice. Lord, all my dreams and all my plans, Lord, I place them in your hands. I give myself away. Come on, if that's your testimony, sing unto the Lord. I give myself away. Give myself away. So you, so you can use me. Can use I give myself, give myself away. away. Yes, I give myself. Myself, say, give myself away. I give my pride, my self esteem, I give it all to you, God. I give myself away so you, so you can use me, can use mold me, me, shape me how you want me to be. Away. I give myself away. Oh, yes, I do. I give myself, give myself away so you, so you can use me. Can use me. Oh, my life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. Oh, not my own to you I belong come on and say I give I give myself say I give, give myself, myself to you all over the room can we say that my life is not my own my life is not my own to you Give myself to you. Come on, one more time. My life is not my own. My own. To you. Oh, I give myself. I give myself. One time, I give myself away. I give myself away. The potter, I am the clay. I give myself away. Yes, so you yes, yeah. I give myself. give myself away. I give myself. Give myself away. So you, so you can use. 
one and four. Can use me. Can use me. Can use me. Can use me. I want you to use me in your service. I'll go wherever you want me to go. I'll say whatever you want me to say. I want to be yielded to your will, God. I'll go wherever you want me to go. Can you use me? Can you use me? One more time. I give myself away. Come on, let's sing to the Lord. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, I give myself away so you can use me. I dare you to open up your mouth and say, I'm available. I dare you to open up your mouth and say, I'm available. I'm available to be used in your service. Wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to do, whatever you want me to say, God, I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. Hallelujah to your name. Bless your name. Bless your name. Put those blessed hands together again. Amen. I give myself, I give myself away. Thank God for this music ministry and then uh, to this listening audience. Uh, we give praise and honor to God and those of you that are, that are online, we thank and praise God for you uh, who are looking in to Facebook Live, how we praise God even now uh, for you stopping by here and listening to this this broadcast on this morning uh, what a marvelous day it is I said what a marvelous day it is God has God has blessed us tremendously to see another day that we ought to be excited about I, I pray that when you woke up you told the Lord thank you I, I pray when you woke up you told the Lord thank you for another day uh, that he has allowed you to see uh, and that allowed you to be in a day that he's made. It's a brand new day. It's, it's a brand new day. It's not like any other day you've ever been in because you've never been in this day. <laughs> None of us have never been in this day. Amen. So this is a brand new day. It's another Sunday, but it's a brand new Sunday. A amen. Amen. But there's a word that's couch chronicled and cataloged. Uh, in the gospel recorded by St. Luke, uh, chapter 7, verse number, verse number 10. It's royal, regal, revealing, and ready, ready, ready and begging to be preached. And I pray uh, for the Holy Spirit to guide us now through this passage of Scripture. Verse 10, verse, verse number 10, verse number 10. And they that were sent, returning to the house, found a servant whole that had been sick. Had been. Had been sick. Turn to the person next to you real quick. Tell them good morning. The neighbor, it's good to be here. And with God's help and our prayers, pastor, going to preach about simple solution to a serious situation. Simple solution to a serious situation. Diane Presswood driving home with her two daughters, Kimberly, who's two years old, and Christy, six months old. Diane Presswood 
pulled into her driveway and decided to go to the mailbox and get the mail. Diane Presswood left the key in the ignition. And while she was retrieving the mail, Kimberly, two-year-old daughter, locked all the doors. And Diane Presswood came back and she was trying to get Kimberly to lift up the latch on the door. Diane Presswood tried about an hour to get Christy Kimberly to lift up the lock on the door. And she tried everything she knew to solve this issue. Finally, with tears running down her eyes, they lived in the country so she couldn't go next door to neighbors. There were no neighbors there. Her husband was out of town. And Diane Presswood got so frustrated trying to get little two-year-old Kimberly to unlock the door that she sat down on the side of the car and just began to cry. Finally, she heard some tapping on the window. Little Kimberly had raised herself up and was tapping on the window. Uh, and, 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 and Diane Presswood was still trying to get Kimberly to unlock the door. Kimberly, two years old, she said, Mommy, do you, do you want me to roll down the window? <laughs> and maybe I'm talking to somebody here. <laughs> that instead of trying to unlatch the door, roll down the window. She spent an hour trying to get two-year-old Kimberly to unlock the door and never once thought about rolling down the window. And maybe some of us are going through all type of trials, stressed out, trying to make things work, ends meet, and the solution is very simple. Just roll down the window. It's funny how life can be. We, as, and it, and it really depends on how you view it. Life can be frustrating. Life can be, life can be sorrowful. But it can also be exciting, exhilarating. It all depends on how you look at it. We've come out of pandemic. We've gone through, we go to the stores and shelves are not full like they used to. Nowadays, when you're going to shop, when you see that item that you want, you better grab it. We can't come back next week like we used to. Because next week it will be totally cleaned off. Yeah. Grab it while you can. <laughs> but we're living in those type of days yeah. where the problem is, is serious, but the solution is simple. Christ is our answer for all the hurts in the world today. I want to just take about seven minutes and I'll let you go and, and I know many of you are trying to get to your game. I, I, I want to I want to I want to peep in on on this on this centurion in chapter seven. In fact if you look at the whole chapter when you get home you'll you'll discover uh, that there is a servant that is recovered in verses 1 through 10. Verse, verse 11 uh, through 35, you discover that there is a son that is restored. And verses 36 uh, through 50, you discover that there is a sinner that is released. 
all in this seventh chapter of the gospel recorded by St. Luke. In fact, this particular story, you can also find it in Matthew chapter 8, beginning at verse 5. It's also found in John chapter 4. Uh, but when you, look at the, when you look at the gospel of Matthew and Luke, they appear to contradict themselves, but they really don't. You see, it, 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 the harmonizing of the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, Ma Matthew, writes, Matthew writes to a, a Jewish audience. And, and, so, and so he didn't have time to give all the details like Luke. Uh, Ma Matthew, Matthew skips the centurion working through his servants. He, he, he kind of truncated his, his gospel. But, but Luke writes to the, to the Gentiles, and he had to take his time and explain uh, the, the actions uh, of, this, of this Gentile uh, man. He was a centurion, uh, and, and the Bible uh, lets us know that a centurion soldier, he was at least in charge of at least 100 soldiers. Uh, he, and and, and, and they, didn't, they, they, didn't, they didn't take too kindly to the Jews. But in this text, the Bible says that this centurion had a servant that was ready to die. You, you, can, find, you can find the heart of a person when you just watch how they respond to the needs of others. Now, he, he, this text doesn't say his wife. It didn't even say his son or daughter. This is just his servant. And, and the centurion is concerned about his servant. The text says he was ready, ready to die. In fact, it was so bad that the text says he was ready to die, which means the sickness was irreversible. C couldn't, couldn't, re couldn't reverse it. it. It had gotten so bad that you couldn't, you couldn't reverse it. Not, not only was it, was it irreversible, uh, the, the, the text says it was irresolvable. No one could solve this issue. But then it's irrefutable because the centurion said he's ready to die. That, that, there is nothing, there is nothing, uh, that, there is nothing uh, about this statement. There's no ambiguity here. He, he simply says he's ready to die. And, and all of us have some situations in our life where we're ready to crumble. We're ready to break up. We, we're ready to break down. And, 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 we, and we're looking for solutions. Uh, to, to help us get through the dark days of our life. And, and maybe while you're, while you're looking and while you're grasping and while you're scraping and, and while you're screaming, maybe you ought to just simply roll down the window. This, this, text, this text says that, that the centurion was concerned about his soldier, about his, about his servant. Now, now watch this, because the text opens up saying now he had ended all of his saying, that's verse 1, in the audience of the people, and the text says he entered into Capernaum. And I said to you many times, any time you see the words he entered, stop right there. Because any time Jesus enters something, it's getting ready to happen. <laughs> he, he entered. And maybe that's a word for you today. Because when you were at your lowest ebb, if you just be honest, underneath the skin, you can truly say he, he entered. 
when, when I was sick and didn't know if I was going to get well. I prayed and talked with the Father and, and he entered. When I thought I was about to lose my ever-loving mind, he entered. My child was out there and, 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 and so far out that I didn't know how I was going to get them back. But the text, the, you can say he entered. And if he's ever entered your life and turned some things around, you ought to be able to, to shout about it and not, and not be ashamed to let somebody know he entered. I'm, 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 I'm not what I used to be, but I'm so far from what I, I used to be because he entered. He entered. I, 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 you're looking at me now, but if you could have seen me a few years ago, if you could have seen me a, a few years ago, you, I was a total mess, but the, he entered my, my life. And the only reason we're here today The only reason we're here today is because he entered. Sickness had, sickness was about to take us, but he entered. And whenever I leave, read where, where he entered, I, I think about my own life, and I can live transcript from my own life. And when he entered, something, something happened. Every time you read, he entered, something happened. Luke chapter 5 said he, 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 he entered the, the, the ship of Peter. He entered. Peter had fished all night. Hadn't caught nothing. Life was on the line. Reputation was on the line. Family was depending on him. The market people was depending on him. But the text said he hadn't caught nothing. And he had been out there toiling all night. But the text said Jesus entered that morning. And he got into the same ship that Peter fished in last night and caught nothing. And you remember Jesus told him uh, to cast your nets. T -t take your nets and throw them into the, into the water. And, 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 and Peter dropped one net. And, and the text says that he, the net broke. And when he entered, he'll break some things in your life. So, so, somebody who's been fooling, somebody who's been trapped with addiction I ought to be able to see he entered strung out and, 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 and with crack and cocaine and what hallucinogenic drill and the tech that and he entered your life and if you ain't been there all of us got something we've been in all of us are some ex something you you may have been you you may have been the, you may have escaped the drug route but all of us been through through something and the bottom line is, he entered. Well, the text says, the text says, the text says, the text says, and the centurion servant, watch this now. The text says, the text says, the text says, verse 3, when he heard of Jesus, the text says he sent unto him the elders of the Jews. The elders of the Jews. Seek, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. He, he sent the elders, the presbyteros, he sent the elders to go to Jesus. Now, now notice this text. Now, notice this text. And I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you go. I, I got about five, four minutes. I'm, I'm now, the, the text says, the, the text says, he, he heard of Jesus. Hadn't met him, but he heard of him. And just by hearing about him, the, the text says, the text says, he humbled himself. 
See, many of us can hear about him and know what he can do, but if you don't humble yourself, there around, he not only heard, but he humbled, and he had hoped that he would heal his servant. The, the text says, the text says, and he sent his elders and beseeching him that he would come and, and heal his servant. In other words, he was begging him. You didn't find no centurion begging no Jew for nothing. But the text says he beseeched him. And watch the text now. Watch the text. Watch the text. And when they came to Jesus, verse 4, his delegates, those whom he sent. And see, it was the same as, as, as when we send the, the, when we send anyone from the White House to go to another nation. Uh, they're speaking on behalf of the president. Uh, Secretary of State, they, 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 they're, they're speaking on behalf. It's as if Biden was right there talking to that delegation. So the text said he sent, he sent a delegation. And the text said when they came to Jesus, they, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. Watch this now. When, watch this now. They, they besought him. They, they besought him. Now, now, they besought him. Parakaleo. This Greek word is a compound Greek word. Para means alongside. Kaleo means to call. They, when they got to him, they called Jesus alongside them. And they, they, they pulled him alongside them. And they went to telling him what their master had sent them for. And so, and so when, when, when they got his attention, they put him alongside him, and then they start, they saying, listen, I, 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 we've been sent here because uh, 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 our master servant is sick and ready to die. And listen, and listen, Jesus, and listen, Jesus, uh, we feel you ought to do this. We, we, we know he's a, he's a Gentile, but Jesus, we feel you ought to do this for him because he built us a synagogue. Now, the text doesn't go out, you know, they don't care. He, he was not only, he not only a centurion, he was a rich centurion soldier. He was wealthy. But he used his wealth to build a synagogue. I mean, where the word of God is taught. Now, why would he build something he's never going to go in? He built it for the Jews. He, he had a love for the Jews. And see, when you got a love for somebody, you, you can do some things that, that, that don't, don't, don't immediately impact your life. The text said he built a synagogue. For, now, here, 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 watch this. For the text said, for he loved it our nation and he has built now and when Jesus went with them now now they had gotten his attention they'd gotten his attention and Jesus went with them and when he was now not far from the house the centurion sent friends to him and saying unto him Lord trouble it not thyself for I am not worthy that thou should enter under my roof. <laughs> what humility. Yeah. Now, now, now what, what humility. See, see, here is how you can make sure that you have the same humility. You see, f f first of all, f first of all, he has, to, he has to look at his insufficiency. And if we're going to, if we're going to get him to solve our serious problem, we've got to listen. We, we've got to come down and, 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 and really tell ourselves it ain't much to us. He, 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 listen, he had to see his own insufficiency and look at the sufficiency of Christ. In other words, I, I can't solve this. I can't handle this problem. It's too big for me. It's out of control. I've tried it. I've got money, but I can't get my servant healed. I, 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 I've got everything that it takes 
to be satisfied in life, but I've got just one issue. My servant is ready to die. But, but you know what I like about this text, Darrell? I like the intercessory faith. We, we, we talk about intercessory prayer, uh, which is on the behalf. But, but watch this intercessory faith. He, he uses intercessory faith. He, he, he takes his faith and uses it for his servant. His servant who was sick and ready to die. Ready to die. What? Ready to die. Now, now he uses intercessory faith. Now, you know what? There's, there's really three types of faith. In my in my estimate, there are there, when you got a serious problem, there are there are at least three kinds of faith. Now now now, now, now the the first the first faith I like to call is an anemic faith. You, you you'll find this faith in 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 Mark chapter four verse forty. Uh, the disciples were on the ship with Jesus. With Jesus. And the storm rose. And the Bible says when the water and the wind got contrary, they, they went down to the bottom of the ship and woke up Jesus and asked him, Doest not thou care that we perish? And Jesus comes to the top of the boat and he speaks to the wind, the waves, peace be still, rebuke, rebuke the wind. And, and the Bible says, he turns to them and says, Oh, ye of Little faith. Have you no faith? Anemic faith. When serious problems rise, we can't use this kind of faith. But there's another kind. There's average faith. Just, just average. It ain't, it ain't it, just average. It ain't below. It ain't high. It's just average. Matthew chapter 9 verse number 34 says this man brought his son to Jesus to heal him and he took, brought his son to the disciples to heal, heal, heal. He brought him to Jesus but the, Jesus was up in the mountain and so he had a disciple so, so, and, and, and he couldn't, he couldn't he could, they couldn't heal him and when Jesus got there he said if you can do anything if, if, if you can do if you can do anything. Heal my son. Jesus says, if. My, I want, can you believe? And the man said, I believe, but Lord, help thou my unbelief. I believe, but I'm just not there yet. I, I'm not at that level that, 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 that I should be, I, I, but I'm, I'm striving. But, but then we take a look today, we, 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 we have anemic faith, we got average faith, but, but then watch the text because this, this, this faith we see here now uh, is achieving faith. And when you're going through serious issues, you need some achieving faith. You, 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 need, you need some faith that can get you through it, that won't stop until you get to your destination, won't stop till your problem is resolved, won't stop till the issue is solved, won't stop until you're where you're supposed to be, won't stop until you got everything you need to move into the house, everything you need to, to, to take care. You, I need some achieving faith. This, this text says this man had achieving faith. But now watch, not, not only did he have intercessory faith, but, but now watch, watch this, not, not only did he have intercessory faith, but, but the text said he had invested faith. He, he had invested faith. He invested his faith into the life of someone else. But not only that, but, 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 but McCoy he had, influ he had influ influential faith. His faith could influence. And he sends a delegation to Jesus for him to heal his servant. Watch this text. Watch this text. Watch this text. Watch this text. The text says, the text says, when Jesus was on his way to the house, the centurion stopped him. Now, you, you, you've asked him to, you asked him to heal your servant. 
You, you sent a delegation. But, but, but do you see the progression of this man's faith? He sends a delegation. They go to Jesus. They pull him alongside him. They get him to come. And while he's on his way, he stops him. Whew. This, 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 this centurion is growing every day. The text said he stops him. Now watch what he said. He says, watch this now. He said, Lord, trouble it not thyself. I know you're busy. I, I know others are calling on you. I, I, I know you healing the sick, raising the... I, I know, I know, I know you busy. Trouble it not thyself. Watch this now. He said, now, watch this. Trouble not thyself. He said, listen, I'm not even worthy for you to come under my roof. He said, he said wherefore neither thought I myself. Were. Now watch this. I wasn't even worthy to come to you. That's why I sent a delegation. I know my own unworthiness. I know my own sinfulness. I know my, my own darkness. And I sent a delegation. I, I sent the elders to come to you because of my own darkness. But now watch the servant. Watch the servant. I'm, I'm close. I'm close. Watch the servant. He said, he said, I'll tell you how you can. He said, it's simple, Jesus. You can say in a word. You, 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 listen, you ain't got to travel here. You can say in a word and my servant can be healed. This text about to make me pull my hair out. Because, because this, this, this Gentile, now, now, now watch this. He built the synagogue, but he never went in the synagogue. He did not have, he did not have the Jewish culture. He, he, he did not have anybody to speak the words to him. You know, in, in, in the Jewish faith, uh, ch ch children of the Lord learned at an early age to read the scriptures. So, so my thing is, if, if, he, if he wasn't raised in the Jewish culture, he, did, he didn't have any rabbi to sp speak to him. He, he built a synagogue that he never went into. Where did he get this kind of faith? Watch this. Hold on to your seats. Now here we are. We got everything we need. This happened over 2,000 years ago. But we, we, have, we have the whole Bible before us. And not only do we have the whole Bible, listen, we have heard of the miracles that, that Jesus has performed. We've heard, we know of the miracles that God has performed. We got all of this available to us, and yet our faith is anemic. Here is a man who, listen, and faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And, and here is a man who, did, who, was not, who, who, who was not availed to this, and yet he has faith to tell Jesus, you can just say in a word. Here we are, multiple Bibles, multiple Bibles, all kind of software, and yet when it comes time to use our faith, the Hebrew writer says it like this, Hebrew 11, 6, it's impossible to please God. It didn't say without serving. It didn't say without giving. It didn't say without singing. It didn't even say without preaching. It said without faith. It's impossible to please God. But what is faith? Faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Evidence in things not yet seen. And we see this in the life of this centurion. For, for faith is the substance of things hoped for. Evidence thing like that. Now, now when you look at that word substance in Hebrew, 
in, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, su substance, this, 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 this word substance here, uh, this word substance in, in Hebrews 11 and 1, it, it's, it's interesting because it, it is the hoopostatus. Uh, it, it's the hoopostatus. And, 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 and hoopostatus comes from when they will make wine in those days and the grapes and the sediments from the wine would fall to the bottom of the bottle. That was the hoopostatus. That, that, that was the substance in the bottle. And, and, and so the, the hoopostatus, hoopo means under and stao means to stand. It's a standing up under. It's, it's the hoopostatus, it's, it carries the idea of having a foundation to it. It, 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 the hoopa status is the idea of having a foundation. You see, we're sitting here in this, in this sanctuary, but we got, we got a firm foundation. We got beans on top of the foundation. We got a roof on top of the foundation. Look at everything that's on the foundation, but we're sitting on the foundation, but have nothing crumbled. That is the hoopa status. And, and if you don't have the hoopa status of life, uh, then everything that comes around you, make, makes you crumble. E everything that falls down on you, you crumble up under because you don't have the hoopa status. Firm foundation that can withstand the storms of life. It's a firm foundation that can stand when others leave here because of the hoop of status. Well, well this text, I got to rush. I, I, I'll hear you on that, too long. I, I got, now, now, now watch it. We, we, we said, we, we, we looked at, we looked at, we tried to look at, we tried to at the affliction of the servant. But, but, then, but, then, but then we want to have, look at the acknowledgement of the soldier. We did that, but but now, but, but, but now, lastly, la lastly, la oh, I'm 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 done. L lastly, the assurance for the situation. He says, saying the word, my servant. Now watch what Jesus. Said. Jesus, said, verse eight. For I now watch this. The man said, for I am a man. Now watch this. Set under authority having under me soldiers, and I say unto one, go. Now, now watch his experience with authority. He said, now, I know something about authority. Because I can just say to a soldier, go, and he goes. And I say, well, I say come, and one comes. And so, listen, I, I, am, I am familiar. I'm familiar with authority. But, 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 but watch this. He said, and, and do this, and he do it. And when Jesus heard, verse 9, when Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in all Israel. And that's only two times he used that statement. The other time was in Mark chapter 6, verse 6, because he said, I have not, he said, I have not found uh, nowhere people with less faith. You know, he, he was going into to his own country and he couldn't do any miracles. He said, I ain't seen nothing like this. And the only other time he uses it positively is when the woman, the Canaanite woman brought her daughter. That, that's the only other time he said, I have not found so great a faith. Now, now wouldn't it be wonderful? I wish he would tell me that. Bill, I, 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 listen, I, I, I've not found no, no greater faith. I've not, I'm talking about faith in the one who's able to, to move mountains. I'm talking about faith in the one who created the world. I'm talking about faith in the one uh, who, who created the sun and the moon and the stars. And, and I'm talking about the one uh, who, who stepped out of nowhere and stood on his own essence because there was nowhere else to stay. I'm talking about having faith in, he says, I've not found no greater faith. No, not in all Israel. Wouldn't you want him to say that about you? Now what, watch, watch the text. Watch the text, watch the text. Verse 10, and they that went Return into the house, <laughs> found a servant whole that had been sick. Got close, got to get out of here. Jesus didn't go with him. 
he took the word of a Gentile. One who hadn't met him. One who hadn't heard him. Heard about him. But hadn't heard him. And isn't that the way our life operates? We hear about things and we act on them. We hear about somebody and we act on it. That's why commercials pay so much money. Because they know they can get us to hear. More than likely, we're going to act on it. But wouldn't it be good if we learn how to do what the Apostle Paul shared with us? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, we walk by faith and not by sight. Habakkuk 2, 4 said, a just shall live by faith. Our whole life operates off of faith. Pisuo, it means persuasion. What are you persuaded? P -p Paul said, I'm, I'm persuaded that neither height nor death, nor things present, nor things to come, neither height nor death. Have I got a witness here? Nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Have I got a witness here? What separates you from the love of God? Have I got a witness? God is in the healing business. Have I got a witness? Some of the struggles we have, we have them because, uh, as the songwriter said, we won't carry everything to the Lord in prayer. Have I got a witness? Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we won't carry everything to the Lord in prayer. Have I got a witness? He's able to lift a bow down head. Have I got a witness? The things you're struggling with. The Lord is able to take care of them. And the reason we struggle is because we won't carry everything to the Lord in prayer. Have I got a witness? I thank God I've learned how to carry everything. Have I got a witness? And there's nothing on the other side of everything. Have I got a witness? I carry everything. I carry my little problems. I carry my mid-sized problems. I carry my big problems. I carry everything to the Lord in prayer. Have I got a witness? I bring them to him and he takes care of everything. Peter told us to, to cast all our cares upon him for he careth for you. Have I got a witness? I'm talking to somebody here been struggling with a problem all week long and you keep struggling and you keep struggling. Have I got a witness? You're sometime up and you're sometime down. Have I got a witness? And the weight of the burden keeps getting heavier and heavier. Why don't you stop and just roll down the window. Have I got a witness? Quit trying to get somebody to unlock the door. It's a lot easier if they just roll down the window. Have I got a witness? I thank God that he makes everything all right. Have I got a witness? He's able to carry us through. Have I got a witness? I thank God that he woke me up this morning and started me on another day's journey. Have I got a witness that builds my faith? Have I got a witness that builds my faith? I got up this morning I was able to dress myself. That builds my faith. Have I got a witness? I walked out of my house with my own legs. That builds my faith. I was able to see without a white cane or without a seeing eye dog. That builds my faith. Have I got a witness? I was able to get in my car and drive down the dangerous highways of life that was building my 
faith. Have I got a witness? I arrived at 1930 Gallagher here in West Dallas that kept building my faith. Every time the Lord allows us to go a little step further, it ought to build your faith. Have I got a witness? You ought to quit whining and complaining about what ain't working and stop and thank God for what is working. Have I got a witness? Stop telling God what you don't have and thinking what you do have. Have I got a witness? Quit thinking, quit complaining about who you don't have and start thanking God for who you do have. Have I got a witness? The Lord is on our side. Have I got a witness? The summit said, Psalm 54 and 4, that the law is my helper. Have I got a witness? I thank God that he's my helper. Have I got a witness? Because when I need some help, I can depend on him. Who do you depend on when you need help, when you need to get out of a situation? Who do you call on? Have I got a witness? Who do you rust trust in? I trust in God, wherever life may be. Out on the land, on a stormy sea. I trust in God to bring me through. Won't he do it? I say, won't he do it? Is there anybody here that's ever tried him and you discovered that he will come through? Have I got a witness? Now, I'm not talking to y'all who he ain't brought, haven't did anything for. I'm talking to those believers who know without a shadow of a doubt, I've been where this man was. I've been here. I've had some trouble in my life. It was irreversible. It was irresolvable. It was irrefutable. It was have I got a witness, but I called on the Lord and he brought me out. He made a way out of no way. Won't you trust him? Won't you trust him and never doubt him? He will. I say he will. Won't he bring you through? Won't he bring you through? I say won't he bring you through? Take your burdens and lay it up on the Lord's shoulder and let him walk you. Let him talk with you. Let him walk with you and let him talk with you. He will. I say he will. He'll bring you through. I say he'll bring you through. And there ain't anything, there's nothing too hard for God. Let me tell you, Red this, and I'm on my way to my seat. If it's not bigger than death, hell in the grave, you ought to give it to God. Have I got a witness? The God I serve conquered both death, hell, and the grave. Now, if you don't have a problem that's bigger than those three, you ought to just turn it over to God and then leave it there. Don't pick it up no more. I said, leave it there. I said, leave it there. I said, leave it there. And let God. God, take care of your burdens. Let God take care of your bruises. Let God take care of your struggles. Let God take care of your strains. Let God take care of your sickness. He's a God that's not in a hurry, but he's always on time. Have I got a witness? Ain't he on time? Can anybody testify that you didn't think he was going to make it, but he showed up on time? You didn't think you're going to have that job, but he showed up on time. Won't he show up? And when he shows up, he will deliver. Have I got a witness that one more time that he showed up when the world was in chaos? It was darker than it ever been in the life of the world. But the Bible says they took Jesus to the bald-headed hill called Calvary. It was dark that day. Have I got a witness? In fact, the Bible said the S-U-N refused to shine because two sons couldn't shine at the same time. The so end was hanging on the cross the S-U-N it was whom God created he was up in the sky and the S-U-N took a, a bow and gave over to the S-O-N have I got a witness the moon took a hemorrhage and start dripping in blood have I got a witness it looked bad that day y'all have I got a witness Mark said all the disciples they forsook him they all ran and started hiding in their own places it was looking bad that day 
Have I got a witness? And some mean old soldiers was at the foot of the cross. And they tell me that one soldier took a spear and pierced him in the side. Blood and water came from his side. Blood for redemption, water for baptism. It was looking bad that day. They took lots and cast them on his garment. Have I got a witness? They gambled on his garment. Have I got a witness? That the Bible said he was hanging on the cross. It was dark out there, darker than 10,000 midnight. But through the darkness, I said through the darkness, through the darkness, my Savior lifted himself up off the nails and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Have I got a witness? Lifted himself up, up off the nails and said, Woman, behold thy son and son, behold thy mother. Have I got a witness? They tell me that he lifted himself up, up off the nails. Have I got a witness here? Have I got a witness? and said my God my God why has thou forsaken me have I got a witness I told y'all it looked bad have I got a witness died on the cross six and the ninth hour died on the cross have I got a witness they buried him in a borrowed tomb stayed there all day Friday and all Friday night all day Saturday and all Saturday night but early I say early, early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, Sister Mary came running, looking for her Lord, but two angels were sitting on the rock and say, he's not here, and why seek ye the living amongst the dead? He has risen, just like he said. If he said it, you can believe it. If he said it, you can trust him. If he said it, you can stand on it. Have I got a witness? He got up. I say, he got up. He got up. Yes, sir. He got up from the grave. Have I got a witness? And the Bible said, Tabernacle here fit the long days and took a cloud and went back to glory. Have I got a witness? And the angel was sitting around and say, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing? That same Jesus is coming back again. And that's what I want to leave you with. Why you're struggling and why you're straining, why you're stressed out, that same Jesus is coming back again. Won't you roll down the window? Have I got a witness? And quit trying to beat the, trying to beat your problem and just roll down the window. Quit trying to beat your stress and roll down the window. Have I got a witness? I'm out of here, y'all. But thank God that Jesus, he's alive. Won't you say he's alive? I say he's alive. Ain't he alive? He's alive. Have I got a witness? In the Revelation, John chapter 2, say he's mobile. He's walking with the seven golden candlesticks. Have I got a witness? He got the seven stars in his right hand and the seven golden candlesticks, which is the seven churches. And he's walking around. He may be on your pew right now. Why don't you tell him what you need? He's right there on your pew. Tell him what you need. Tell him what you're going through. Tell him what you've been through. Have I got a witness? And won't you tell him that you will bring me out if you bring me out I'll serve you until I die ain't he worthy I say ain't he worthy say yeah say yeah say yeah say yeah won't he do it won't he do it won't he do it he'll do it simple simple solution to serious situation nothing you're going through is too serious for him to handle the only reason he don't handle it is because you don't give it to him the only reason you keep struggling falling, stumbling because you won't give it to him. If you give it to him, it'll make your life brand new. 
Anybody here ever turned it over to Jesus? Am, am I the only one that ever turned it over? I thought I had it made. I thought I knew what I was doing, Tessa. I, I mean, I, you know, I didn't even know about them. I, 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 could, I, I knew what to do. But one day I ran into a brick wall. And I discovered that I couldn't do nothing on my own. But I heard the words of Jesus says, come unto me. All ye that are burdened and heavy laden. And I'll give you rest. Sylvia, the word said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. You discover that I'm meek and mild. Now I heard that, but but when I acted on it, that's when my life began to change. We can hear stuff, Linda, all our lives. But if we never act on it, and I'm talking to some folk, you've been listening to the gospel all your life. One sermon after another, one lecture after another, you go act on it. The devil don't mind you hearing. Listen, he don't mind you coming to church. Can I say that? He don't mind you coming to church. He don't mind you hearing God's. He just don't want you to act on it. And we come in Sunday after Sunday. We hear, pick up our purse, phone, go back home, but we never act on it. Stand on it. If God said it, I believe it. And that should settle it. Simple solution to a serious situation. Christ is the answer. He's, he's the key that can open the door. He's the key that can open the door. But as long as we continue to be in self and think about our sufficiency, we got to see our insufficiency and see his sufficiency. If we're ever going to solve the issues that you're going through, you got to realize that there is a God bigger than you. And he's bigger than any problem that you're going through. It's called, it's called surrender. <laughs> it's called surrender. And that means to throw up both hands. That means get out the way. That means don't become a threat to what he's been trying to do in your life. Lord, I surrender all. I surrender all. All to you I owe. Because sin has left a crimson stain. And he's washed me. And if he washed me, he'll wash you. He hadn't run out of washing. There, there is no water crisis with him. <laughs> He'll wash you today and make your life brand new. The door of the church is open. Maybe one here can kind of baptism, Christian experience. The door of the church is open. If you're here. If you're here. If you're here. God is the joy and the strength of my life. You're here. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. He'll never, ever come short of his word. I've got to fast and pray, stay in the narrow way. I'll keep my life clean every day. 
want to go with him when he comes back. Yes. I've come too far and I'll never turn back. God is. God is. God. time to give time to give and we'll do that right after we do communion come on brother and y'all ready the giving is ready brother Deacon's always having communion okay I know we forgot to we're gonna change up things okay come on we'll I'm still way back there walk wait for y'all to walk down we don't we'll do all that walking and turning and Saluting and all that. No, no, no. Got a different way to come out, Ralph. desires to partake of this communion service and does not have a communion receptacle, please raise your hand. All right. We have one in the back in the center. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Amen. Let us pray. 
God our Father, thank you for um, your simple solution and, and our serious problems, Father, which is Christ Jesus, Father. Father, thank you for his availability um, in our problems, Father. Uh, we thank you that he shed his blood on Calvary's cross, Father, that, that solved the most serious problem that we have, Father, and that's death, hell, and the grave. Um, Father, like Dr. Bell said, if our problems are not bigger than that, Father, we are in good standing, Father. So thank you, Father, for the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross, Father. Father, as we reflect on the life that you have given us, Father, the blessings that you have blessed us with, Father, the grace that you have given us, Father, we are so thank you, Father. And Father, we not only want to reflect, Father, we want to repent, Father. Father, please um, remove anything from our hearts that will um, prevent us from partaking of this holy communion service, Father. And also, Father, we want to rejoice, Father, because your son died, Father. It's because he died, Father, that we can um, have this communion service, Father. It's because he died, Father, um, that we have life itself, Father. Because he died, Father, and that we live, Father. He died so that we could live, Father. So, therefore, we can rejoice, Father. Father, we pray this prayer in your darling son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Reading from um, the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11. Um, these are the words of the Apostle Paul, beginning at verse 23. For I have received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Amen. Amen. It's giving time. Amen. I'm going to say that again. It's giving time. Amen. I get to come back and give um, what God has already given to me. Amen. We all can be a part of this part of our service. Amen. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and one of the ushers will be glad um, to serve you. Amen. You should have at least um, three envelopes. One envelope for the ministry of the church. Amen. These lights, uh, this air. Um, these facilities, um, it's all, it's a, it's all is, is due to your ties, amen, his ties, amen, not our ties, his ties, amen, and not only do we, want, do we want to take care of the ministry, we also want to take care of the man of God, amen, amen, he, he has bills just like we do, amen, amen, he has a light bill, he has a water bill, he has a gas bill, Amen. And it's our job. And it don't stop. Thank you. Thank you, Deep. Amen. And it's our job as the recipients of his, his um, sweat and his, his tears and his efforts and his preaching and teaching. It's our job to take care of him. Amen. Amen. I don't mind take care of him. Amen. Because he's going to take care of me. Amen. With the word of God. Amen. So I do not mind uh, putting something in a pink envelope. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, man. Pen on the floor. <laughs> amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Tolly. Let's keep Sister Tarver in prayer. Amen. Amen. We know God is able. Uh, he's able to comfort. He's able to care in only the way he knows how. Amen. Amen. Has everybody received an envelope? Amen. The Bible says, will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. Ye say, where well, anyway, we rob me in tithes and in offering. The Bible says, ye are cursed with the curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes in the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. 
And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open to you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. The Apostle Paul chimes in on this and says, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So let every man give not according to his heart, not grudgingly or not out of necessity, because God loveth a cheerful giver. And I always say, if you take care of God, if you give God what is his, he will always, not sometimes, not maybe, he will always take care of you. Amen. God, our Father, we ask that you take these gifts and use them in which the purpose it was given. Father, bless the givers, Father, and, and, and may this offering be used in the purpose in which it was given, Father. Please take these gifts, Father, and multiply these seeds, Father. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this Sunday's worship experience. Please watch this video about Givelify if you are interested in worshiping and giving. Givelify is giving simplified. Givelify is the simplest, most beautiful way to give and track donations to the place of worship or charity of your choice. You're not limited to the cash you have on hand. There's no need to write checks, and there are no complicated forms to fill out or text message codes to remember. Givelify automatically pinpoints your location and intelligently identifies the fundraiser, worship service, or conference you're attending without the need to search. Since Givelify automatically detects where you are, making a donation can be completed in as few as three taps. Tap 1. Use one of the pre-configured denominations to choose your donation amount. Tap 2. Select the campaign to which you'd like to contribute. Tap 3. With your stored credit or debit card, complete your donation in one tap and get an immediate donation receipt. Setting up recurring giving is a simple two-tap process. Tap the frequency you'd like and you'll never forget to make your gift. Givelify lets you easily see your complete donation history. Mark the place of worship you normally attend as your home for quick one-tap access. Givelify. Tap. Give. Done. Thank you for joining in this worship experience on this morning. We pray that you were blessed by the message. Uh, come back and be with us on next week. We pray that God will continue to bless you, guide you, and guard you, and grant you His grace as you continue to serve Him in this kingdom. Bless you, and come back and see us.